Picture this, you drive a 1995 GMC Suburban. It's 24 years old and has 78,000 original miles. The trans fluid looks like this, but it could look like this. Do you flush it? Comment below. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Jimmy and you're watching One Road. In this video, I'm gonna flush my old, crusty, original transmission fluid with this brand new cherry red synthetic stuff. The tranny is a 4L60E. Let's get into it. All right, for the transmission fluid, I'm gonna be using this Valvoline Max Life fully synthetic fluid. This fluid is rated for Dexron 3 and that's exactly what this truck calls for. I'm also gonna be using this clear vinyl tubing. It's a 10 foot section with a half inch outer diameter and a three eighths inch inner diameter. As for the filter and gasket, I picked up this Wix unit from my local auto parts store. Here you can see the new filter seal that we actually won't be using. But if you were wondering what they looked like, well, this is it. Here's an up close view of the filter. This 4L60E transmission comes with either a shallow pan or a deep pan. In my case, it's a shallow pan and this is the filter for it. This kit also also includes a rubber gasket. The first step we're gonna take is actually flush out the old transmission fluid. If you look over on the top corner of the passenger side of the radiator, you'll see this hard line threaded right into it. This whole passenger side of the radiator is actually a transmission cooler. There you can see the inlet in the bottom and the outlet comes out the top. This truck in particular not only has the radiator attached cooler, but there is also this external cooler. We could take off the whole front grill of the truck and drain the fluid from the outlet of this external transmission cooler. However, I want this to be as easy as possible, so we're not gonna do that. Back to this hard line coming out of the top of the passenger side of the radiator, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. I did spray it beforehand with WD-40, so cracking this thing loose is no problem. In order to not have any leaks, you're gonna have to thread this clear vinyl tubing into that fitting. You literally have to apply tons of pressure and twist it at the same time, just like you're threading in a bolt. And before long, it will be threaded in there nice and tight. Then this line just runs right down to your catch pan. This next step is not for the faint of heart. Matter in fact, this whole process is not for the faint of heart. What we have to do here is actually start the vehicle and let the transmission do the pumping. What's literally happening right now is the transmission is pumping all that fluid through the cooler in the radiator and out this hose. It's going right into our catch pan and we're gonna keep this going until we start to see bubbles. Once you see the bubbles, shut the car off immediately. All right, look at what we got out of this transmission. So far, this is a little over five quarts. It started blowing bubbles, which means there was no fluid left in the transmission pan. But this stuff looks like mud. Look how disgusting this is. Now I'm gonna drain this catch pan into another because we're gonna have to do this process again. With the transmission pan being fully empty, we're gonna pull out our transmission dipstick. This is also where we're gonna pour in our brand new fluid. Since we pumped out about five quarts, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in four quarts of brand new fresh fluid. This should be just enough to let that transmission pump do its job and pump some more old fluid out into my catch pan. And here we go again. I started the truck, I waited a few moments for that pump to pick up that new fluid and begin the pumping process. This pumps more of that old fluid out of the system. Again, I'm gonna keep this going until I start seeing bubbles. And here you can see the benefit of using this clear vinyl tubing. The old fluid has now mostly been pumped out. As you can see through the tube, the color is no longer a brown mud, but a respectable red. Now, I do admit this process, although it's called a flush, does not get every ounce of the old fluid out. There's still fluid caught up in that torque converter and I'm sure in other places within the transmission. But for the most part, we're pumping out as much of the old garbage as we can. All right, with the flush done, we're gonna go ahead and jack up the truck and put it up on jack stands. I'm also gonna chalk off the rear wheels as well as setting the parking brake. Here you can see I'm using not only two six-ton jack stands as my main jack stands, but I also have two three-ton jack stands backing those up. Now for the hard part. Looking up at the transmission pan, you can see just a few of the 16 total bolts that we have to take out. In my case, I'm gonna be using a ratchet, an extension, and a 13 millimeter socket. Just start grinding away and get these suckers loose. On one end of the pan, you're gonna to wanna to leave the bolts fully tightened while you take out all the rest. The object here is to not let that pan fall. 
So we're even going to leave a bolt on the other side. Loose, but in. As I take these bolts out, I'll be using this cardboard template. By doing this, I can ensure that I'm putting the same bolt back in the same hole when we're ready to button this thing back up. All right, so I have most of the bolts removed, except for one up front and a couple in the back. This pan is ready to be cracked loose. I'm taking out this last front bolt that was holding it up while keeping pressure on the pan, and I'm cracking it open. The pan is now being held up by these few loose bolts on the back end. I also have a drain bucket ready to go. Keeping pressure on the pan, remove the last couple of bolts. All right, all the bolts are out, guys. This is the scary part. Keep your head and face out of the way and try to drop this pan as evenly as possible. Oh, gosh. Oh, 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 almost. Oh, gosh. I almost just took a bath in transmission fluid. Wow, that was close. What a mess. It is now time to take out the old filter. The best way to do this is to simply just rock it back and forth while pulling down. It should just pop right out. Well, here it is, an up close and personal look of the 4L60E sans drain pan. Well, this next part is definitely not recommended unless you know what you're doing. I'm taking my torque wrench and I'm torquing these bolts down to eight foot pounds or 96 inch pounds. Some of them were very loose and some not so much. The next step is to make sure that the gasket mating surface is clean and clear of any sort of debris or dirt. All right, guys, so I've chosen to leave in the old filter seal. I didn't bother trying to remove it because it is quite a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap in my new filter, which is pre-lubed with just a very, very small amount of grease. Now that that's all done, we can focus our attention on the drain pan. Looking at this drain pan, we can see that it's actually not that bad. We do have some old gasket material that we will have to remove, but look at this magnet, guys. This is precisely why you should at least be dropping the pan and doing a filter change. This magnet contains all of your metal shavings that come off of the transmission and clutch plates with age. This is basically metal dust that has been caught by the magnet. To remove this old gasket material, I'm gonna take this razor blade and very carefully peel it off. Now I'm gonna take my clean rag and clean out the inside of the pan, including that magnet. So far, this pan is looking great. Now I'm gonna take this Scotch-Brite pad and clean off any remaining debris. The gasket mating surface of this pan should be clean, bright, shiny metal. Lastly, I'm gonna spray this thing down with some brake parts cleaner. Whoa, guys, look how clean this pan is. Looks like brand new, and the magnet is spotless. Now I'm gonna test fit my gasket, and it looks like everything is fitting perfectly. The gasket looks good, and all the holes line up exactly. In order to hold this gasket in place while I reinstall this pan, I'm gonna go ahead and slide just a couple bolts in right through the gasket. This gasket holds the bolts tight enough to keep them there, which in turn holds the gasket in place. Now that I have four bolts here holding the gasket in place, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall. Once you carefully fish that pan back up to the transmission, trying not to bump anything so you don't have any debris falling into the pan, you can start tightening those bolts by hand. And once those four bolts are hand tight, we can refer back to our cardboard template. Again, this ensures that we're putting each bolt back into its original hole. Once I've got every bolt finger tight, I'm gonna take my extension and 13 millimeter socket and again, go over them by hand. Next, I'm gonna take my 3 8 torque wrench and begin the process of tightening in a crisscross pattern. This is gonna take a couple of passes, with each pass tightening a little more. Make sure you're going in somewhat of a crisscross pattern. This ensures that the drain pan is being tightened evenly, thereby applying even pressure to that gasket. After a couple of passes on every bolt, it should be tight enough to start actually reaching torque, which in my case is 18 foot-pounds. With everything buttoned up underneath and the truck down off of its jack stands, we're gonna remove this clear vinyl tubing. Then we can go ahead and simply reinstall this hard line. The next step is going to be to refill this transmission with fluid. Do not start your car until you refill it with fluid. In total, we've pumped out roughly 10 to 12 quarts of fluid. And so we know we're gonna have to replace all that fluid with roughly the same amount. I'm gonna start with eight quarts. I'll start it up, let it idle and get warm, and check the level from there. With the truck idling and up to operating temperature, I can now pull the dipstick and check my levels. And so far, everything is looking good. All right, guys, here's a little bit of a bonus. Let's take a look inside our original transmission filter. I'm just gonna use some tin snips here to try to cut this thing open. Gosh, guys, this is actually harder than it seems. <laughs> ah, got it. 
So here is the filter media. It seems to be one piece that's folded over on itself. Let's go ahead and pull it out and look inside. Oh my gosh, guys, look at all this metal. These are all metal shavings, which most likely came from this tranny during its break-in period. This is precisely why I wanted to get this filter and fluid changed immediately. Man, there really is a lot of metal in this filter. All right, let's take a look at the fluid that now resides inside of our 4L60E. Look at this stuff. Nice, bright red, brand spanking new, fully synthetic transmission fluid. And now let's take a look at the stuff that was in there for the last 24 years. Here's the new stuff, and here's the old stuff. And here they are side by side. Would you have done what I did? Comment below and let me know. Make no mistake about it, this is no easy task. First of all, you're dealing with transmission fluid. And who wants that all over their hands and, and face? Second, that tranny pan has 16 bolts in it and is still full of fluid even after flushing it all out. So when you drop that pan, it's highly likely that you learn right then and there that that beautiful cherry red transmission fluid does not taste beautiful or like cherries. Wow, I am stoked though. I finally did it. I conquered that mountain that is a transmission fluid flush and filter change. The last step is to drive the truck and to see if that tranny is gonna blow up. Because we all know the school of thought that says, hey, never ever flush your old transmission fluid. It can cause slipping, it can cause your transmission to completely blow up. I mean, the list goes on. In my case, I just chose to change it. I love this truck and I wanna keep up with the maintenance. I can't stand to know that there is 24 year old transmission fluid floating around in there. So I guess time will tell. Hey, if it blows up, at least I'll have another video where I put in a brand new transmission. <laughs> Hopefully this video was entertaining for you. If it was, please hit that thumbs up. And also, if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. I'm Jimmy, and this is One Road.